we've got some great news from the Star Wars universe, and we've got some terrible news. The new trailer for the final season of The Clone Wars has been released, and also the Obi-Wan series has been delayed. I was so excited about the Obi-Wan series hopefully coming soon. We're going to talk about all that today, but first let's start off with The Clone Wars, which is my favorite era in all of Star Wars, that in-between period, in between episode 2 and 3, that led to the entire Star Wars universe going through a major change. It's no secret that I absolutely love the Clone Wars series, and it's a shame that it never got a proper finish. When Disney took over Star Wars, they put a stop to it, and you can actually go online and see all the unfinished plot points and all the unfinished CG that they were working on. But it's getting finished now. It's being released for streaming on Disney Plus on February 21st. I'm not going to show the whole trailer in this video because Star Wars music gets copyright claimed almost 100% of the time. I'll post a link in the description for the trailer for those that haven't seen it, but we're going to take bits and pieces of the trailer and analyze it all and go into what it could mean for the universe and what we can expect to see in the Clone War series. In the trailer, you may have noticed a lot of Mandalorians. Mandalore, their main homeworld, is going to be a huge deal. It's a great move covering them in the final season, especially after the success of the Mandalorian series. Because before, outside of the more hardcore Star Wars fans, nobody knew what a Mandalorian was. And now everybody knows what a Mandalorian is. It's going to cover a conflict known as the Siege of Mandalore, one of the final battles of the Clone Wars. The previous seasons of the Clone Wars painted Mandalore as a planet that wanted to stay away from the war completely. But as wars go, it's only a matter of time before where they spread to other regions that want nothing to do with it. Darth Maul was revealed to be alive, and he spent his time hating both the Jedi and the Sith. And he formed his own criminal empire, and eventually he did take over the planet as its ruler. And he's back in the trailer, still causing chaos in Mandalore, and it looks like Ahsoka Tano is going to be fighting him one-on-one. -on -one. It's great seeing her back, because in the series, she left the Jedi Order completely. She's kind of operating on her own now. I hated this character when they first introduced her, but she grew on me as the series progressed, as she matured as a character and had storylines of her own. She's a great character, actually. And the moment that she left was so powerful. I know she was added in after Revenge of the Sith already came out, but her departure really set the stage for Anakin's fall to the dark side and his distrust of the Jedi as a whole. It paints a more complete picture, and it makes his turn to the dark side look a lot less sudden in the movie. So I am interested in seeing who comes out on top in this duel, because we do know that neither Ahsoka or Maul die, at least in this scene since we know that she survives all the way past Return of the Jedi, confirmed in Star Wars Rebels, and Darth Maul shows up in Solo running his criminal Crimson Dawn Empire. I think the Siege of Mandalore is going to be one of the darkest things we see in all of Star Wars, since her time on Mandalore has been said to intersect with Order 66. So when the Order went down, she was there. And I suspect that this right here could be the moment where it happens, and she's feeling all the other Jedi getting killed, kind of like Yoda did on Kashyyyk in the movie. We also know she was with clone Captain Rex, and he didn't participate in Order 66 because he took the biochip out of his head before the Order went down. So hopefully we see that happen, and we know Gregor and Wolf were also clones that removed their chips also, so I can assume maybe Rex told them? Could this right here be a scene where clone troopers are attacking her and Rex is trying to help her escape? And here we have Anakin looking pissed off. In the lore by this time in the war, Anakin was just sick and tired of the fighting. He wanted the war to be over so he could be with his wife, but they kept sending him back into the front lines. And you see that in episode 3 when he kills Dooku without a whole lot of hesitation. He's just completely lost his patience by then, and here you see Trench about to have a really bad day. Anakin's most definitely going to end him here. If you don't know Trench, he's that spider-looking alien, and he's one of the commanders of the droid army. He was a pest in the Clone Wars series, thought to have died early on, and then later on they brought him back with cybernetic parts. There's one really quick blink and you'll miss it scene that's really cool. In the hologram room right here, there's some easter eggs and ties to Revenge of the Sith. On the left side, we have Twi'lek Jedi Aayla Secura with Commander Bly. At the top left there, we see Ki-Adi Mundi with Commander Bakara. In Revenge of the Sith, those are their respective clone troopers that open fire on them during Order 66. So the pieces are all nicely coming together here. And on the top right, we have Master Balaba with her Padawan, a young Kanan Jarrus from Star Wars Rebels. In Rebels, yeah, he's all grown up, but the comic book series Kane and the Last Padawan explains how he survived Order 66 and watched his master get gunned down. It's such a cool easter egg, and I kind of hope that we get a whole episode with them in it together. When the Clone Wars series was airing, Rebels didn't even exist yet, so it's really cool seeing him added in here. One confusing part, though, is this. 
Anakin's looking at a hologram of Padme. He didn't know she was pregnant until he came back from the Clone Wars, but here she clearly has a baby bump, so either this is going to make a nice sized plot hole, it takes place during Revenge of the Sith after he found out, or he's just kind of an idiot and he didn't look down and realize there was a baby bump. I'm also wondering if they're going to re-canonize Mace Windu crushing General Grievous's chest. I'd like to see that moment again. I was already incredibly pumped about this season coming, and this trailer got me even more excited. The Clone Wars is like my favorite Star Wars anything ever. So if you're a fan of the Clone Wars too, leave me a comment down below telling me who your favorite clone trooper is, and I want to know what your favorite episode is. Now to the bad news. Like I said, Disney Plus was getting an Obi-Wan series starring Ewan McGregor. It was going to be live action. He was reprising his role from Revenge of the Sith. It's just prime Star Wars content. It should be perfect. Still might be, but yes, it's been delayed indefinitely. I'm so mad about this, and I know I shouldn't be because maybe it'll result in a better show, but damn, I was really excited about it. It's really something fans have been waiting so long to see in some form. I mean, there were comic books covering this time periods back before Disney even bought Star Wars. Those stories were also told through merchandise, like statues from Sideshow Toys, where you could see his Clone Wars armor and him carrying around a bunch of gear. And there's also an outstanding fan film that just recently came out. Search Kenobi fan film on YouTube and you'll see it. It's so well done, it's exactly what I envisioned the series to be like. Originally, the series was set to take place eight years after Revenge of the Sith, and production was beginning this year. As of right now, the crew working on the show were sent home. They were told the show was down indefinitely. It's been said that Kathleen Kennedy wasn't happy with the script due to how similar it was to The Mandalorian with Obi-Wan protecting Luke, like The Mandalorian has to protect the baby Yoda. But that's kind of what he spent his whole time doing during that exile, so th that's quite alright. A lot of this comes from sources that claim to be close to people actually working on the project, so take all of this with a grain of salt, but it's probably legit, like 99%. It seems it's still directed by Deborah Chow, who did an amazing job on The Mandalorian. She deserves every bit of praise, and she needs to keep her hands in the Obi-Wan jar. And it's also being scaled back from six episodes to four. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, sometimes less is more, but sometimes you want more. <sighs> I don't know. I'm going to keep my eye out for more official news on this. And if any comes out later, I'll make sure to update you guys. So it's still coming, but now the question as to when is just an enormous question mark. Leave me your thoughts on the entire Obi-Wan situation down below. Are you disappointed too? Do you think this might be a good sign? What are your thoughts? That's all I got for you today. I will catch you guys later. And may the Force be with you. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.